modified for a skinny water assault without any issues, and a reminder of just how untamed Mother Nature can be. All that up next on Next Level Fishing TV. As a kayak angler, and obviously this is also my opinion, I'd like it to answer a question. Uh, I'd like it to be able to perform and to make its place by doing things that a paddle angler would struggle to do, and also being able to do what a pedal angler would struggle to do. I think the future is very bright for kayak anglers who are specifically, obviously, targeting fish. So take a look at this paddle. So, you know, there are obstacles. Uh, I, I think that in, in a shallow setting, a good old-fashioned traditional kayak will outfish a pedal kayak. Now, what am I gonna get with, uh, with a pedal system? And obviously, I think it's pretty obvious, you know, it, it's hands-free. There are plus and minuses on both systems. You're more hands-free with a traditional old-school kayak with a foot rudder system than any pedal system that is knob-controlled. At the same time, if you're able to get clearance and get into super skinny water, I think this could be huge for a lot of anglers. But there's an issue, there's something we have to fix on Bixby and that's what I'm gonna try and do today. Uh, right now we're looking, say, between eight to 10 inches with this universal rudder. Uh, but if we could choke up on it a little bit and make it a more in line with the hole, um, this could easily give us about two to three inches of uh, shallow water cruising. So we're gonna attempt to do that. As of right now, Bixby has an 8-inch clearance. The goal today is to get her down to 2 to 3 inches. But before that, we have to have a better understanding of how the universal rudder works. Unlike most traditional stern rudders, this one actually slides down its own sleeve, which is later met by a notch inside of a bored-out groove that eventually stops and locks it. The idea is to simulate its own design. Adding an extra crossing point, but in a lower position on the rudder, might be the answer that I need. So before we make this look much prettier than just a simple screw and lock nut, it has to be tested. We'll wrap it up for the night. Tomorrow I'll be joined by two of my good friends, Noe and Ruben. We'll take this out, maybe catch a fish or two, and see just how well it performs in shallow water. You guys hear and see all those birds? There are little concentrated flocks right on the line. Those are all redfish. Hopefully where we're going it's gonna be like that. The adjustment is a huge success, as I'm now able to cruise in as little as three inches of water. So after today's trip, we'll go back and modify and pretty things up just a little bit. I don't know. 
don't know if it's really, really that big, but I had seen her kind of work in this little area. Her tail was popping up. Just a bad little first red. Perfect hook, hook set right here. Seems like they're kind of hunkering in this little pocket. With one redfish on the board, it seems like today might turn out to be a wonderful day until I get a call from Noe. Sorry, but the person you called has a voice. Yo. Hey, dude, give me a heads up, bro. You got some, uh, that storm's shifting this way. Uh, do we need to get out of here? Yeah, 60 mile an hour winds coming this way. 60? Yeah, 60. How long? How long do we got? Uh, it says 10 o'clock at the 60 and the 40 should be here, so I'm assuming they're already coming. They're already close because the wind is over here. Okay. Um, yeah, I got one. Days before, every weather app had predicted high winds to reach around 15 miles an hour, which is well within the kayak fishing okay. range. But we've just received warning through Noe's wife, who had been keeping a close eye on weather developments. We've got 10 minutes to clear before this 40 to 60 mile an hour predicted shear wind makes landfall.